Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Faraz Ali, who's the IT Channel Market Business Manager at Vertiv Australia and New Zealand. Faraz joins us today to discuss edge infrastructure and its application in industry and Vertiv's role in gaming and sustainability in the data centre. Thanks for coming along, Faraz, and welcome to the jam. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. So COVID saw IT move from the back room to the boardroom. Businesses across Australia and New Zealand are continuing to build on their digital prowess, but what are technology leaders doing to ensure they can get the most out of their investments? Yeah, so what we're actually finding is a lot of organizations are actually moving to cloud computing or relocating the data centers offsite, right? And as a result, they are removing the need for having an on-premise data center, obviously cleaning up footprint, no longer having to manage assets. However, we've seen a byproduct where if you start moving or relocating your data centers into the cloud, let's just say, you are actually effectively putting your data much further away, right? And as you're increasing the distance from your data, it's obviously going to take a lot longer to get to it. And hence, the word edge was born. So the edge being that ability or that middle stone to go, hey, my data is really, really far away, let's just per se. But what if I had a middle gateway that could jump in and access that data for me much faster? And, you know, we've just recently done some surveys and found that about a third of people are already starting to plan or move to a edge like deployment. Okay. So uh, some already have some are in the midst of it, but, you know, we're hearing the words edge and cloud all the time. And this is how it's kind of, kind of uh, currently coinciding with businesses here today. Awesome. And just on the uh, top of that, can you share some examples of edge computing in action across the industry? Yep. So a really cool example we have is down in Tasmania. So Tasmania, we have a customer called Tasmanian Salmon or Tassel. Now, traditionally what would happen is you'll obviously have multiple salmon pens, you would provide some level of feed, and then after a period of time, you would then harvest your salmon and obviously distribute as required. What Tassel started finding was saying, what if we start putting some IoT sensors in? You know, let's start working out how hot or cold the water is, how much sunlight's coming in, how salty is the water, What's the wind doing that day? And after playing with these metrics, they started finding that, you know, we can find a happier fish tends to want to eat more. The more a fish eats and the more efficiently do it, not only does the fish grow faster, but we are obviously also saving on the materials to grow them. So we started working with them and implementing all these IoT sensors and all the pens. They started having all the pens automated and we started getting high definition video recordings coming straight back to their workstations. You know, and we de helped deploy this all in a micro data center that was sitting right in their office on site, such that their workstation engineers are literally there watching the fish, using the metrics, feeding at the optimal level, and then harvesting at the optimal level. Um, this has been, you know, one of those big things we've seen here in Australia, the idea of using sensors, video, audio, all these metrics to try and make these businesses a lot more efficient. How oh, cool. And um, the pop culturization of the esports industry is obviously a big thing. It's um, created massive gaming investments and revenue. Given the computing power required, is Edge also an important consideration for this industry? 100%. So esports or the gaming world has just exploded, right, on two fronts. So the word esports, think about it as gaming, uh, the Olympics version or the gaming version of the Olympics. So people are rocking into these stadiums and watching the most favorite gamers and teams go head to head. So they're literally sitting on a stage and watching people effectively game on a bigger screen. Now, imagine how frustrated you'd get if you're watching your favorite gamer and for what, whatever reason, they started having network issues or the site just started having power issues, right? So you can't stress enough the importance of keeping that up. Secondly, there's also been emergence of streamers. So streamers using platforms such as, you know, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, ev everything out, out there. And you can imagine you watching your favorite streamer. This is, this is their income. They, they are pushing the gaming, they're getting viewership, sponsorship. And you can imagine you can't afford for your PC or your network to ever go down or you're effectively going to lose your audience. So we're seeing a lot more people deploying, you know, uninterruptible power supplies or UPSs or just effectively backup power to make sure that, they never lose their servers or their computers in this case. How awesome. And 
just on kind of on top of that, there's an estimated 2.9 gigawatts of new data center capacity being developed, um, which is creating concerns for the resources these kind of facilities consume. What are businesses doing to bring the performance of data centers to the heart of their corporate sustainability strategies? Yeah, so what we've actually found is, at least here in Australia, we've estimated that, you know, the data center depicts about 3.5% of the total energy consumption. Obviously, as we start consuming more data, um, it's going to naturally increase with the technological growth. We are looking for much better ways to be energy sustainable. So some of the key early ones we've done a lot of is renewable energy, you know, wind, uh, solar, looking for, you know, those alternate ways to provide power. Also looking at other battery energy storage systems, such as lithium iron, as opposed to your normal lead acid batteries. Some of the other cool things that are being done in the industry now is starting to use refrigerants that don't have such a high global warming impact, right? So using these refrigerants in these cooling cycles and going, how do we minimize the impact of this refrigerant in this space? Now, something a bit closer to home for here at Vertiv, what we started also doing is what we call our energy optimization program. So looking for cool and efficient ways to go, hey, Mr. Customer, do you really need this to always be on? Or what if we go and rejig some of the assets that you have and find a more effective way such that you don't always have everything in your data center running? Maybe you don't need all the cooling running all the time. Maybe you don't need all, this, all these loads, you know, your servers and your network switches, et cetera, whatever it is. You don't need it always on. Can you turn some of it off? And that's what we've started doing over time with this power metering. And we've seen about, you know, approximately a 30% increase in efficiency just by turning things off, people are saving power because they're no longer using things they don't need all the time. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for those insights, um, Faraz. Really looking forward to hearing more from uh, Vertiv in the future. Not a problem, very fun. Thanks for having me.